Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Boats. Good morning. Another Antarctic day. What are you gonna do? You have to deal with it. It's not like you can change the weather, right? Anyway, as you guys can see, I did not sell my Craftsman 420 track drive snowblower. I almost did. <laughs> I listed it for 175. Guy was interested, which is a miracle. Guy's ready to meet me at the church where I usually sell all my stuff. This thing ran great all day, right? You guys saw me driving it from the backyard to the front yard, started on the first few pulls, whatever. Started warming up, well, nothing wrong, right? But when I did drive it from the backyard to the front yard yesterday, I did see a lot of oil spillage coming out of the breather, you know? It was overfilled with oil. So as you saw, I drained some of the oil so it goes right to the full line, right? Okay, that wasn't the issue. However, remember that area here was all flooded with oil. So when I was ready to load it into my van to go meet the guy, it wouldn't move forwards and backwards. The drive, it was slipping, I guess, you know? So I'm thinking that the oil covered the friction plate, the plate that moves with the uh, engine, right? And then when you do the shifting, that other wheel with the rubber coating on the edges touches the disc and turns it. I'm thinking the disc is now saturated with oil and it was slipping. So that's why it wasn't moving forward and backwards. So I called the guy, he was waiting at the church for me. I felt bad because he drove all the way from Amityville. That's right, the same Amityville from Amityville Horrors, that movie. Anyway, that's a South Shore, it's about a half hour drive. So I feel kind of bad. The guy drove all the way to meet me and then I'm not ready, but the guy understood. I said, hey, listen, I'm sorry, but I'm trying to load the thing into my van and it won't move forward or backwards. So I assume you're not gonna want it, you know, right now until I fix it. He's like, yeah, I appreciate you calling and telling me, you know, people understand if you just tell them the truth, you know? So today I'm gonna put this on its service position on its face, right? Take the panel off and see exactly why it's not moving. And this is what it sounded like right before uh, I was gonna go meet him. So as you saw from that clip, that was right when I was moving it back from the van into the garage again when it didn't move. So at high throttle, at high speed, like six, right? It moves a little, it doesn't move anywhere else. And that could be helpful, you know? So I'm gonna put this on its service position, which is its base. And there's not enough gas in there for it to spill out the top. I will admit, I haven't, I haven't messed with this thing in a long time. While I have it up here like that, thought I'd give you guys a closer look at how the track drive looks from all angles. This is actually the smallest track drive I've ever had. Very small tracks, small wheels. This is a pivot thing where you can step on it and it's uh, completely horizontal to the surface and then you can step on it and then it tilts upward if you wanted to move it around. This is the handle that controls the, um, the friction disc that touches the main uh, drive disc. And that's how you shift from six, five, four, three, two, neutral, one and two in reverse. The recoil starter to the Tecumseh engine, horizontal shaft, actually has a starter. These starters are worth about 40 bucks. So, you know, it's worth it and it works too even with the switch over here. Decent snowshoes, scraper is okay shape. These handles are kind of hinky, you know? I think that uh, basically over time, and this is an old snowboard, this is over 20 years old for sure, the hole for that shaft gets too big from moving around too much. 
So ideally, if the guy doesn't buy it, um, I'm gonna replace this shaft here for a thicker, I'll put a thicker bolt in there with a stop screw, a nut, stop nut. That ought to fix that, this wobbling thing, see? As you can see, the holes just become too big or the shaft has been worn, you know? Or maybe the hole in the metal handle has gotten too big. Did I just say that already? I did, yeah. This is the heater box, the muffler, primer bulb. It's the choke knob, that's a key. But, I mean, you don't really need it. It just sits there, you know? Little lever there for the throttle. It was missing the lever, so I just, uh, the pl plastic end, and I just put something on there. For a while, it wasn't uh, grounding, so it wasn't shutting off. I had to bend the ground thing a little bit so it touches the metal when you push it all the way down. I'm surprised that the carburetor still works. This is the older Tecumseh carburetor. It has a fuel mixture screw on the very bottom. I kind of like those because you can really adjust it, you know? Anyway, as you can see, it's very wet over here because the uh, breather hose is right there. So if you overfill it with oil, it builds up oil pressure and then the oil comes out because there's nowhere else to go. Like I said, decent snowshoes, and the scraper's decent too. Um, but a lot of people don't know about the scraper is that it's two-sided, right? So if you wear out the bottom side, you can flip it around and use the other side. So it, you could, you know, have a little more time with it. Here's the plate where I can, I'm gonna remove so you can have access to all the inner transmission, the gearbox. And as you can see from over here, very wet right around there and the disc is right there. So I think maybe that's it. Hopefully that's it. So it looks like it's four five sixteenths screws. so good I was worried that you know I would strip the nut and a piece would come off with a piece broken because it's so rusty you go slow here we go Okay, so the, let me get you off here so you can see. This disc over here is the part that touches this. And it doesn't seem very slippery, although you could see it is wet there, you know what I mean? When I move this lever here, That's what slides on the disc, see? So when that disc is moving along uh, from the belt, it touches on here. When that wheel is on the most outer diameter of the disc, it goes faster. When it's in the middle, it's practically stopped. When it's around here, it goes slow because the disc moves faster as, the, as you go towards the edge of the, the disc. See how it works? So it wasn't the uh, belt. Belt looks okay. It's this thing. It wasn't gripping. As a matter of fact, this looks like it's on metal to metal. It's not really rubber. And it's also wet, see, with oil. So uh, let's see. I'm gonna look this over a little bit, and then I'm gonna get some brake cleaner and spray it on this disc and clean it off with a rag. Hopefully that'll fix the problem. So looking closer at the disc, I put my glove around here, you'll see that it's wet of foil. And that was the cause of it slipping, because this is still rubber, all of this is rubber. And it's just wet with oil, so it wasn't gripping well. 
I'm gonna use some brake parts cleaner from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. We're gonna spray the disc. And the rubber. Move the track a little to get the other side. And I'm just gonna wipe everything dry with a rag. Okay, clean the disc up, put everything back together again. Let's uh, check it real quick and see if it uh, moves forward and backwards. see just works great all you need to do is clean the uh, disc and that thing with the rubber thing I forget which one's the friction disc but uh, I'm gonna give the guy a call later and see if he still wants it if not I'm gonna try to fix this switch on another episode and put new shafts in here but uh, being that I have a potential sale I'm not gonna mess with that because if I mess with it, I might break it or something. You know, things happen. Murphy's Law. And, uh, you know, it's $175. That's cheap. Really cheap, you know? But um, we'll see how it goes later. That's my fix today. Why does it move forward or backwards? You look at the evidence. I had some oil spilling down there, splashing got around the uh, disc area oil and friction it's not supposed to have any slippage so if you have oil in the area that's the reason why it doesn't move forward and backwards but wait there's more i was messing with this thing just looking at it and it seems like this thing can come off pretty easily so i thought i i couldn't break anything by just doing this just to take this end off right it's one of those ends where you just like bang it on, you know, the little tabs on the inside are one way facing. So when you push it in, it won't come back out again, but uh, it's also difficult to get off. But being that this is over 20 years old and kind of rusty, it seems like it just pops off. I'm trying to be very careful with it so I don't ruin the tabs, you know, so I can pop it back on if I had to. See what I'm saying? Some of the tabs are already bent. Let's take a look at this shaft. Try to bang the shaft out. There we go. Uh-oh. 
so it's two of these things. I may have to just get like a bolt with a... There we go. Okay, see what I'm saying here? So the handle is removed. Look at this uh, shaft. You see the grooves on the inside from the wear over the years? That's the reason why, uh, and also the hole is probably bigger than it should be any, because of the movement over 20 years or so. So I'm gonna try to find some kind of a bolt that's thicker than this, right? Wider than that, and have a stop nut on the end so it doesn't tighten, but rather stay on there tight. You know what I mean? And then maybe we could see how that goes. Might as well fix it as long as I'm here, right? So I couldn't find one that's like exactly the same uh, diameter as the hole, you know, because it's like in between. So I just found like this bolt that's a, about the same. I'm going to put a couple of washers in between here. And this is not a stop nut. It actually moves, but I'll put another nut on there so it won't come off. Yeah, see, it still moves because it still has too much play here, you know. Unless I had a sleeve that was exactly the same, you know, width as the hole. It's really tough to do, you know. I'm going to try to bang this in a little bit more, crimp it so that it's tighter around this thing here. Maybe that'll work. See what I did here? I put a washer on the inner, washer on the inner, a washer on the outer. So now it's pretty smooth and it doesn't wobble as much as this one. See how this wobbles and this one doesn't? I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. Alrighty. Check that out, baby. Huh? Much better. Before these things were like, were like this. You know what I mean? They crisscross each other. Still not perfect, but the play is much better now. That's awesome. I hope the guy appreciates what I did. Honestly, I hope he doesn't buy it because then I'll raise the price to 250 as uh, winter nears. That's it. Tuning up my uh, snow blower moves forward and backwards now after cleaning the friction disc and fix the handles a little bit. See you guys next time on mowers and blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.